up till now in this chapter we have seen all three states of matter and how these states are interconvertible and what do we call these processes plus we have also discussed the properties of particles in solid liquid and gases now we want to study the effect of temperature on the change of state like how temperature would help in solid to change into liquid and liquid to change into gaseous state so effect of temperature on change of state of matter and we know there are three states of matter solid liquid and gases so let us write down this solid from solid state it will change to liquid state and from liquid into gaseous and we can take the example of water so solid state is ice liquid water and gaseous is water vapor so if we take example of ice and water then it becomes even easier for us to understand now solid is to be converted in li into liquid or ice is to be converted into liquid water so what do we need to do we have to heat it so on heating the solid changes into liquid state liquid suppose again we take example of water and we start heating it water starts to boil and it changes into water vapor that means further heating so if we heat that means we apply heat or increase the temperature then solid to liquid and liquid to gaseous state reverse is also possible here we were increasing the temperature now if we decrease the temperature then gaseous state will change into liquid so here it is cooling so if we cool the gaseous thing then condensation will take place and we will get liquid water form further cooling that results into formation of ice so further cooling so by increasing the temperature or by decreasing the temperature we can change the states from solid to liquid liquid to gases and reverse now here we will talk about two temperatures one temperature is written as melting point melting point is that temperature at which a solid starts to change into liquid that temperature at which a solid changes into its liquid state that temperature is termed as the melting point of the solid similarly when liquid changes into gaseous state that temperature is known as the boiling point so boiling point is that temperature at which a liquid changes into its gaseous state that temperature is called the boiling point of that liquid so melting point is of solid and boiling point is of liquid here we are talking about temperature and whenever we talk about temperature the unit that we normally discuss is either degree celsius or fahrenheit but let us first understand the standard unit so si unit of temperature is kelvin and it is represented as capital k 
and there is no degree sign. Like when we write 10 degree Celsius, there is degree sign into it. Here it is only Kelvin. So, Kelvin without degree sign. And 0 degree Celsius. That means we are talking about a temperature at which the ice would start to melt, melting point of ice. This is the temperature in Celsius and if we have to convert it into, into the SI unit, this is going to be 273 Kelvin, no degree written. So that means if we have to think about what would be 1 degree Celsius in Kelvin, so we will write 273 plus 1, that is going to be 274 Kelvin what would be 100 degree Celsius in Kelvin? Again, a simple method, 273 plus the temperature which is given in Celsius. So, it is going to be 373 Kelvin and here we are not putting any degree sign. So, if we have to convert temperature which is given in degree Celsius into Kelvin or the temperature which is given in Kelvin into degree Celsius, we have to follow very simple method. Degree Celsius to Kelvin. So, instead of let us write instead of 0, suppose I write 10 degree Celsius is how many Kelvins? We know this. So, it will be 273 plus 10 that is 283 Kelvin. Reverse, that is Kelvin to degree Celsius. Suppose I tell you that the temperature is 373 Kelvin and we have to convert it into degree Celsius. So, what do we do? 373 minus 273 is equal to 100 degree Celsius. You can practice these questions from the worksheet which we have given on the website. So, the link of that website is in the description of this video where you find the notes of this chapter. The practice worksheets are also there. You can download those worksheets. You can take print out of those worksheets and you can practice them as many times as you can. So, you can practice all these questions there so that when it, such type of questions are asked in our exam, then we will be able to answer them correctly.